Hello, today I am going to discuss obstetric x-rays. With the advent of ultrasonography, the importance of radiography as a diagnostic tool has diminished to a great extent. Nevertheless, in the earlier part of my professional career, prior to the ultrasound era, we depended greatly on x-rays for obstetric diagnosis. In this presentation, I will try to make justice to the art of reading obstetric x-rays, a bygone era. The protocol for description of obstetric x-rays is as follows. First, ascertain the type of x-ray taken, whether it is a plain x-ray or a special one. Next, determine which part of the body has been x-rayed, for example, abdomen and pelvis or only pelvis. Then describe the view taken, for example, anterior posterior view, lateral view or oblique view. Next, check for the centralization. For an anterior posterior view, the x-ray is well centralized if both the anterior superiliac spines are equidistant from the midline. Then talk about the exposure of the x-ray. It is considered to be well exposed if you can see what you want to see. That is in an obstetric x-ray, fetal scale shadow and in the case of pelvimetry, the bony pelvis. Then look for the number of feti seen. For each fetus, ascertain its lie, attitude, presentation, presenting parts and lastly look for any obvious fetal scale abnormalities. And finally give the diagnosis. Remember before you start talking in the viva examination, always formulate the answer in your mind. This is a plain x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view well centralized, well exposed, showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, cephalic presentation with vertex as the presenting part. There are no obvious fetal skeletal abnormalities. Therefore, my diagnosis is obstetric x-ray showing a single fetus in normal vertex presentation. This is a plain x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view well centralized, well exposed, showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie, B-flex attitude with brow as the presenting part. There are no obvious fetal skeletal abnormalities. The presenting part is brow because the anterior frontal is at a lower level than the mentum and the plane of the face is not perpendicular to the long axis of the vagina. Therefore, my diagnosis is single fetus in brow presentation. The plain x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis, AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, the presentation is breech and the presenting part is double footling. The head is well flexed and there are no obvious fetal skeletal abnormalities. Therefore, my diagnosis is single fetus in double footling malpresentation. This is a plain x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, the presentation is breech and the presenting parts are buttocks. The fetal spine is not seen properly because it overlaps with the maternal spine. The head is well flexed. There are no obvious fetal skeletal defects. Therefore, my diagnosis is single fetus in frank breech presentation. This is a plain x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie, reflex attitude, the presentation is breech and the presenting part is complete breech. The head is on the left side and it is in an extended attitude with the face toward the sky. There are no obvious fetal skeletal abnormalities. Therefore, my diagnosis is single fetus in complete breech presentation showing stargazing fetus. This is a plain x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing a single fetus in transverse lie, flex attitude, the presentation is shoulder and the presenting parts are both hands. The head is on the right side and it is in a dorso anterior or dorso posterior position because the ribs can be seen on either side of the vertebral column. There are no obvious fetal skeletal defects, therefore my diagnosis is single fetus in transverse lie, right torso anterior or posterior position with hand prolapse. 
This is a plain X-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing two feti. The fetus on the right side is in longitudinal lie, flex attitude with complete breech presentation, and the fetus on the left side is also in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, complete breech presentation. Heads of both the feti are well flexed. There is no discordancy in fetal size. The twins are lying front to back and therefore cannot be conjoined twins. There are no obvious fetal skeletal defects. Therefore, my diagnosis is twins both in longitudinal lie with breech presentation. This is a plain X-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing two feti. The first twin is in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, cephalic presentation and the second twin is in transverse lie, right dorso inferior position. There is no discordancy in fetal size. There are no obvious fetal skeletal defects. Therefore, my diagnosis is twins with twin A in cephalic presentation and twin B in transverse lie. This is a plain X-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view, not well centralized, well exposed, showing two feta. The first twin is in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, cephalic presentation with vertex as the presenting part. The second twin is in longitudinal lie, breech presentation, complete breech as the presenting part. The head of the second twin is well flexed. There is no discordancy in the fetal side. There are no obvious fetal skeletal abnormalities. Therefore, my diagnosis is twin presentation with first twin in cephalic presentation and the second twin in breech presentation. This is a special colored PET scan X-ray showing two feta. The first twin is in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, cephalic presentation with vertex as the presenting part. The second twin is in transverse lie with the head on the left side and in dorso superior position. The two feti are of relatively equal size. There are no obvious fetal skeletal abnormalities. Therefore, my diagnosis is twins with the first twin in cephalic presentation and the second twin in transverse lie. This is a plain X-ray of the abdomen and pelvis, AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing a single fetus in a longitudinal lie, flex attitude. The presentation is cephalic. However, the skull vault is absent and only the base of the skull can be seen. Therefore, by inference, the presenting part is face and my diagnosis is anencephaly in cephalic presentation. This is the lateral plate of the same patient showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie with cephalic presentation and no skull wall. Therefore, the diagnosis is anencephalic fetus in lateral view. This is a plain X-ray of the abdomen and pelvis AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing single fetus in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, cephalic presentation with vertex as presenting part. In addition to this, the transfer diameter of the inlet is measured. It is 14 cm and the interspinous diameter is also measured which is 8.8 .8 cm. Since the measured diameter is magnified, the actual interspinous diameter will be less than 8.8 .8 cm. The shape of the inlet is round and the subcubic angle is not visualized in this plate. Therefore, my diagnosis is obstetric X-ray pelvimetry AP view showing mid-pelvic contraction. This is a plain X-ray of the abdomen and pelvis, lateral view, well exposed, showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie, flex attitude, cephalic presentation with vertex as the presenting part. The biparietal diameter has just entered the inlet, indicating that the head is engaged. The obstetric conjugate is measured and it is 9.5 cm, and the posterior sagittal diameter of the outlet is also measured, which is 6.6 .6 cm. The angle of pelvic inclination and sacral angle, which can be measured in the lateral plate of the pelvimetry, appear to be normal. Therefore, my diagnosis is lateral view of X-ray pelvimetry. This is a plain X-ray of the abdomen and pelvis, AP view, well centralized, well exposed, showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie, cephalic presentation. The head appears very big in comparison to the fetal size 
and the pelvis. The bones of the skull vault are separated to a great extent. Therefore, my diagnosis is obstetric x-ray showing a single features with hydrocephalus. This is a plain x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis, lateral view, well exposed, showing a single feature in longitudinal lie, hyperflex attitude. The presentation is breech. The whole fetus is rolled into a ball, hence this is called as the ball sign. A halo can be seen around the skull wall and this is called the duels halo sign. And the cranial bones are overlapping which is called as the spalding sign. Therefore, my diagnosis is single fetus in longitudinal lie breech presentation with intrauterine fetal death. This is a special x-ray hysterography or intrauterine radio opaque dye study. The dye in the uterine cavity shows multiple filling defects varying in size from a pinhead to a pea giving it a characteristic honeycomb appearance. Fetal scheduled shadow is absent. Therefore, my diagnosis is obstetric x-ray showing vesicular mold. This is a plain x-ray of the pelvis AP view showing a calcified shadow which resembles a small polas fetus. The crumpled skull wall bones can be seen very well. Therefore, my provisional diagnosis is a lithopedion. This is a plain x-ray of the abdomen and pelvis lateral view, well exposed, showing a single fetus in longitudinal lie, flex attitude. The presentation is cephalic. The whole fetus appears to be at right angles to the vertebral column and the soft tissue shadow of the maternal anti abdominal wall is also seen to be horizontal. Therefore, my diagnosis is single fetus in longitudinal lie in a woman with a pendulous abdomen. This is a special x-ray intravenous urography showing AP view of the abdomen and pelvis, well exposed, well centralized. Both the ureters and pili of the kidneys show dilatation. The right side dilatation is very much more than the left side. Besides this, a single fetus in longitudinal lie, flexed attitude, cephalic presentation is also seen. The white arrow shows compression of the bladder by the fetal head. Therefore, my diagnosis is single fetus in longitudinal lie, cephalic presentation along with physiological hydroureter and hydronephrosis as a result of pressure. For further reading on this topic and other topics, refer to following textbooks written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery.